Hi, if you're new to this channel, my name is Alex and I seem to know an awful lot about ski goggles. Bienvenue and welcome to 150 Days of Winter. Hello. Seven screws, one plate. For about 10 years, I worked for a, well, I worked for the largest UK ski retailer at one of the expos in London selling goggles. And with that in mind, someone brought to my attention there is a new ski coggle uh, on Kickstarter. So I thought I would review it and give you my opinion on what they say is marketing BS and what is actually good. Here we are on RIDAR's website looking at their link lens goggle that they have got on Kickstarter. And first off, you can see very clearly they have gone for a good spherical lens design, which is uh, overall looks really good. Uh, and as we go through, we can see lots of little angles of that, all of which so far looks very good. We can see that they're offering them in three colours. This is the first thing that comes to mind. When you look closely into one of the goggles, where the viewing port is, so to speak, where the foam is, there is about, I'm going to say about an inch of where the lens is, which isn't actually used. Okay, but we'll come to that later on. Uh, Link Lens is designed for immersive sound experience uh, through optimized open air audio technology. Well, to me, that sounds an awful lot like a speaker with surround sound, comma, single ear mode, noise, noise cancellation, and water resistant design. Well, as their ski goggles, you would expect them to be water resistant. A unibody design, music playing, phone calling, voice assistant. We'll come to all those points later on. These are the six best points they can say about the goggle, okay? Triple layer face foam, premium care for your skin. Now, I will agree, uh, a triple layer face foam is uh, very good, but it's also the standard nowadays, okay? Uh, back in the old days, people used to maybe skimp with two layers of foam, but generally uh, for quite a while now, most things which aren't budget budget uh, lenses have triple layer foam, okay? But anyway, uh, double walled lens. Every goggle, I think my first pair of Oakleys that I was given back in the early 90s, yes, I'm old, had double layered lenses. Um, so it's not exactly a, a new idea. Better anti-fog performance. Well, yeah, they could have pointed out that probably they have an anti-fog coating on the inside of the lens as well. Magnetic interchangeable lens design. Again, a lot of people nowadays are going for magnetic lenses, uh, I guess, because people are still amazed by magnetic lenses. They have their pros and cons. Uh, they are super easy to put lenses on. If you flex the goggle more, and here is a pair of uh, Oakleys with no magnetic lenses. If you, if you hold a pair of magnetic lenses and you flex the goggle like that, they will pop out, okay? They will pop back in again, push the frame like so, they will lose their adhesion and they will uh, pop out if you like. So I like this, but you know, uh, as you say, everyone likes magnets. Unibody design. Well, uh, everybody for however I can imagine makes a unibody design goggle. Good for them, but nothing that really stands out. Side fur on their speakers. They've added a little bit. Of, they've added a little bit of foam uh, for sweat proofing. So yes, your speakers will start to get a bit of stinky when they absorb the sweat on your from your face. Okay. And, and finally, silicon-backed head strap. Nothing new about that whatsoever. Uh, a long time ago, somebody worked out that if you put a bit of silicon uh, on the strap, if you're wearing it over a helmet, it just stops the strap from sliding down the backside of the helmet. 20 years ago, it was a thing. 
now it's absolutely standard as we go uh, down and it's wider and taller they say they've got a much wider field of view compared to quote classic i have no idea where they found the term classic 170 degrees of a viewing angle well as that is 180 degrees there 170 degrees is you would almost need to be one of those like lizards whose eyes can look in two directions super wide angle lens here is what sells these goggles uh open air audio you have a pair of goggles with some speakers built in, built into them and as they say uh immerse yourself in surround sound with open air audio well to me that means speakers by their own admission they're saying there will be between one and two centimeter gap between the speakers and your ear which probably also means that if you are with other people they're going to hear the music you're playing which is a trifle antisocial alternatively if you're taking a phone call from somebody and you have people next to you they will be able to hear what the other person is saying which again doesn't add very it doesn't work very well for privacy wind noise cancellation they've got some microphones built in at the bottom there uh, basically which say they will wipe out wind noise only time will tell when you're actually on the slopes to see if they will actually cancel out the noise okay it gets very windy up a mountain and everybody's noise cancellation is different nothing in your ear but beats and we can see an exploded diagram of basically what it is is a speaker which fires backwards they show the goggle sitting on a helmet and i imagine with this speaker if you are wearing a helmet that has got ear flaps on them uh, the ear flaps will in some way encase the sound so that you hear more of it if you see what i mean if of course if you're wearing a hat or if you're not wearing a hat at all sound waves go like everywhere the hat comes down over my ears and by their own admission the speakers that they would have would be on the outside of this hat yeah so of course when the music is playing that music has to go through the, all this material before I can hear it okay open air but hey no headphones and as we go down even further we can see that they are offering something called single ear mode which by the sounds of it allows you to only hear the music in one ear uh, I'm wondering whether you will only hear the left channel or the right channel of course listening to your music in one ear isn't a very good audio experience and finally we have voice assistant activation where of course you will be able to talk to either siri or google assistant from what i understand that if you have a, a bluetooth connection with a microphone uh, you can activate uh, Siri to do anything from making a phone call sending a text to doing anything that Siri wants it's nice that they offer this system however it's not something that is in any way anything to do with them apart from that initial connection to your phone let's go and have a look at their Kickstarter page at the time of making this video they have reached 35,000 euros they've blasted past their goal so congratulations to them of course we can see here that they're based in Toronto Canada which is very good and of course uh, all this information we've already been through on their website is also available on their Kickstarter page but as you can see from their little video there that that ear flap on the helmet does a lot to actually encompass the sound into your ear okay without a helmet on i can imagine that it the sound will be a lot worse again that's just my opinion they of course make a point of saying universal compatibility saying it ha it's hat and helmet friendly is all fine and good uh, most goggles nowadays are designed to fit so you don't have a gap above the helmet however when they say glasses friendly in my experience 
unless there has been a cutout in the foam around the side of the head that when you put on a goggle with even three layers of foam that's immediately gonna catch the arms of your glasses okay and so the glasses will no longer be sitting on your ear they will be actually being pinched by the goggle and so if the goggle moves for whatever reason you're so will your glasses that you're wearing underneath them we then get to see the, all the different types of button pushes that you have to do to go and uh, to go and use the sort of various things here. Uh, we see they are offering 21 hours of music, or 21 hours of yeah, 21 hours of music, which I guess is good. Uh, and of course, they say that they are IPX4 water and snowproof, which again, they're snow goggles. They should be uh, snowproof. And of course, they then do an, have a comparison page where they compare their product, which of course gets all the points versus all the other ones. Although I would like to point out that the, when they compare to bone conduction, which I presume that they're talking about the icebreaker lenses that I reviewed recently, they point out that they didn't offer voice assistant activation. And I have to say, after using them, they did. So uh, they actually um, are selling the uh, icebreaker goggles short. And finally, of course, they're offering them in two versions, the Pro and the Normal. Uh, in this case, they are uh, the only difference being the one uses voice assistant and has a bigger battery. And as I said before, I thought that if you have Bluetooth 5, you should be able to use voice assistant whether they've just disabled the button so that it doesn't actually use voice assistant that's a little bit cheeky that's almost an apple level of trying to get people to upsell them to you can buy the normal version hey but the pro version has this bells and whistles on it let us go and have a look at the comments because that is where things get really interesting this is the this is the comment that i really wanted to get to uh, hey Ryder, uh, campaign finishes end of January and your rewards indicate February delivery date. I'm not meaning to be that guy, but uh, I have back close to 100 projects now and delivery date the following month is really ambitious. Uh, are we expecting delivery for this winter season? And to be fair, they came back and they came back with a wonderful uh, like a non-committal uh, comment. Hi hey, Philip, our entire team are working on the best to catch this snow season. Because of the excellent campaign performance in the last few days, we decided to negotiate a deal with the suppliers and factories to make preparations for manufacturing in advance. To bring the LinkedIn link lens alive, we need your continued support to help us accelerate this production. We appreciate your trust in backing us. So they didn't say whether they will or not, but basically they're just trying to say, okay? And this is really interesting. The next one down, we have the icebreaker company who are starting to spam their comments. Now, if Rydar are listening to this uh, video, they should actually go and remove this because this gets, they've, uh, at the moment, they have already injected their comments several times and it's, it's annoying, okay? The, the Kickstarter people jump in and say, hi, Philip, have you seen this? And Philip, congratulations. Of course, I backed these and there were issues. It was a mess of a campaign. If you want to see how much of a mess of a campaign it was, there is a link up there which tells you how much of a mess of a campaign. Uh, Philip, you are being kind. It was an absolute shit show. Uh, I don't want to pull punches, okay? And as we go down here, we have the same company again, which of course are pretending to be a client, but they are also saying, I supported the icebreakers here on Kickstarter. Um, now, now the updated version is online. This is amazing. Uh, Rydar, these guys are spamming your comments. Uh, like, just ban them, please. There, you're being very polite. So there you go. Uh, th that is my thoughts on the uh, Rydar's Link Lens uh, goggles. Um, uh, I don't think I will be buying a pair to review. However, if anybody does back these and 
has first hand of how they are, please, I would love to know down in the comments below. Uh, and with that in mind, I will see you all in uh, the next video. Ciao.